<laughs> we want to just welcome all of you uh, to this special occasion. Brings back a lot of uh, memories. And we're just uh, right now, Jane brought and you folks uh, at Promo Grove would really appreciate this. This is uh, Gwen's calendar, desk calendar. And on here, it's it's from 79 when, when they came. And she has on the 21st of November, she has Laotian family is coming tomorrow. Rent house <laughs> at 235 East Prospect. So, and then she goes on of other events uh, of working with the uh, our Laotian friends. Uh, we're also very happy to have uh, this extended family here, and uh, we're having a little bit of technical problems, so we won't be live streaming. And we sent that note out, but we'll download it later and get it out for people to see uh, this this program. This program will be pretty short. Uh, and at this time, uh, King would like to share a few thoughts with us and memories. Just to make sure I didn't miss any words, I'm gonna have to go by notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there it is. Today is such a wonderful day and a wonderful day to be here uh, to remember my father, a brave, courageous father that made the way for his family to live free from communism and to succeed in America. Furthermore, in heaven, he continues his duties in serving God. May God bless his family for generations throughout the world. I like to thank you all for attending today of my father's burial service. There's a lot I like to say about my father and the timeless memories to honor my father and his accomplishments. My father and mother always had the American spirit of life and romance. The spirit of living off the land, which was uh, <laughs> selling night crawlers back in the day in, in the station wagon <laughs> a memorable station wagon that is <laughs> and, and passing lessons and knowledgeable uh, uh lessons throughout generations to compound wealth and happiness um, he also gave us a joyful witness that he was able to witness his grandchildren's achievements as successful Americans and to witness the current world achievements and further developments of humankind and greatness, especially with uh, the last couple years, he's, he's listened to like probably a hundred hours of Tesla and Elon Musk. <laughs> So he he you know he knows what's been going on and what's gonna go when what, what's gonna happen from Elon Musk um, YouTube <laughs> hours and hundreds and hours of it <laughs> <laughs> believing in love and romance with an American spirit and charm the Bunam sang Sang way there's a picture of him with his little uh, music uh, uh, I guess uh, old boombox beside <laughs> with the picture just I guess charming himself and charming his uh, way through um, my mom's heart <laughs> just like in the movies in the, the American movie um, I forget what it is but with the boom box holding up with the music trying to charm uh, a, a lady which my mom was charmed by my dad <laughs> and, and it turned out well because I was all, all, all our kids were born <laughs> and uh, he showed us to never give up on hope and a will to live free and joyful with the presence of God's grace of heaven's blessings and eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. And again and again and again, he taught us to never give up on hope and a will to live free and joyful with God's grace of heaven's blessings and eternal salvation uh, in the end. Mm -hmm. And he leaving leaving behind a fortress, fortress of solitude, uh, 
for generations to reminisce of his greatness and all the family and achievements and, and for anyone who desires and dares to dream and take effort to witness its awesome payoffs in outcome of successful architectural design of human life as we know it. So I have to say to you and everybody else, uh, so be kind and joyful to one another, my friends and family. <laughs> well, there's also there's also been lately. I've every, everywhere I go lately when, when I go shopping to the to the stores and the uh, the places where my dad was at and where I took him. I always think of him as if he was right there shopping with me and my mom. Because even recently he went shopping at Marks, and I I kept thinking, oh gosh. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking, Where, "Where's Dad? Where? <laughs> he when he we came to the store to to ask to pick up stuff, and uh, wh where is he? But all of a sudden, oh gosh, <laughs> it's just memories. But still, memories of 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 times when he just ha had his uh, I guess moments where we could always remember uh, the way he f feels about everything and everybody in the world and people and his. Uh, kindness as well uh with others and trying to help help uh i guess e even with um community he was a community leader so he, he tried his best to kind of help uh relations with them um, um uh, the asian community back back in the day especially with, with wayne county and akron and he did he did a lot of community work mm. so it was it was it was it was good parts of his achievements that I, I remember mm. when I was a kid, <laughs> even though he still had his side jobs of selling night crawlers. <laughs> it was fun though. I, I, he'd always take me in Oakley sometimes. We'd be in the back seat going to sell night crawlers and they'd always give us uh, free food oh. <laughs> to kind of help us, I don't know, maybe keep us from crying. <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> but we were, we didn't cry. Then. We were just happy to get free food. <laughs> uh, I guess if, if anybody likes to share any memories, I guess I guess mm -hmm. yeah. come forward. I guess everybody in the mic. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. So I remember Thanksgiving 1979 is definitely being the most memorable Thanksgiving of my life. And my father and Grandma Schmucker, Catherine Schmucker, we went to Stark County as usual for Thanksgiving dinner, but mother stayed here to get the house ready for the Sangsarichans. And I was jealous that I didn't get to stay, but I would have been more work than I was help. <laughs> and uh, I remember my great aunt Edith uh, Miller and other quote old ladies from the sewing, looking and looking as to which comforter to put on which bed to match in which room. And then when the Sangsarichans got here, they immediately wanted to sleep all together on the first floor anyway, <laughs> which we all understood. That's what they were comfortable doing. Uh, Mel has agreed to uh, do the meditation and the committal. So come on. That's right. I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead here. We're going to sing one verse of How Great Thou Art. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world's heavens of me, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy heart throughout the universe is played and sings my soul, my Savior, to me. How great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior, to me. How great thou art.
Like to have notes too, Kay. <laughs> Hopefully the wind doesn't blow them away. <laughs> I want to add my welcome and condolences to the Sanks Rich and family and friends this morning. We're gathered here to celebrate the life and to place the earthly remains of Von Ohm, St. Sorrentin, to their final resting place. So in a sense, we're saying our final goodbyes, although they trust that it's more like, so long, we'll hope to see you again one day. So while there is some sense of sadness or grief that's appropriate for this occasion, we also know the peace that comes from our hope that Von Ohm has simply moved on from this life to the next. At times like this, my mind often goes to the words of the Apostle Paul written to believers in Corinth, and I believe they have just as much meaning for us today. And this is my paraphrase from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me tell you something wonderful, he says, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. We're not all going to die, but we are all going to be changed. And he goes on to mention the suddenness of death, like the blast of a trumpet. And then he says, at that moment, and in the same way, we'll all be changed. In God's resurrection scheme of life, this has to happen, because everything perishable is replaced by the imperishable. What is mortal is replaced by the immortal. And then in kind of a shout of confident victory, Paul says, Death is swallowed up in triumphant life. Who's got the last word now, death? Who's afraid of you now? For those who have put their trust in the word of God and the promise of Jesus for eternal life, there is reason to have hope, even in the face of death. As a family, you have already been dealing with Von Ohm's death for some time now the grief and the loss, the adjustments that you've had to make, the memories and, yeah, where's dad? <laughs> He's, he should still be here. That's all a part of it. And, and when someone we love passes away, it's natural that our thoughts might turn toward their future as well. As believers who have placed our faith in God and in Christ Jesus, we can turn to the Bible for some answers to those questions. And in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verses 1 through 3, we read these words of Jesus to his disciples and also to us. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That scripture passage doesn't explain exactly what happens in the moment when we die, but it does give me an assurance that our lives and our future is in God's hands. And as much as we value and appreciate the life that we've been given here on earth, there are also troubles and difficulties that are a part of our human existence. And for many of us, the hope of heaven grows stronger than the struggles of daily life, especially as we grow older in years. Those same kind of thoughts must seem to have been on the Apostle Paul's mind when he wrote these words from 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 5. So we do not lose heart, he says, even though... Our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what we can, can be seen, but at what we cannot be seen. For what can be seen is only temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the early, earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know 
that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. On Molly, many years ago, you and Bonhomme left your home in Laos, traveled a long distance to a new home here in Ohio. It must have been a tremendous change for you. So much new and different. So many things that were hard to understand. But you made a new home for yourselves, for your family here, and I trust that it has been a good life, despite the many challenges along the way. And now there are more changes happening. And none of us really knows what tomorrow may bring. But because of our faith in the love and the goodness of Jesus, we believe that whether we live or die, there is still good life ahead of us. So I want to wish all of you God's blessing for the days and weeks to come. We'll move now to the words of committal, and we'll go ahead and place the cremains in the grave. If I can do this without falling in. Yes, please. Therefore, seeing that the earthly life of Bonhomme St. Sorrentian has come to an end, we commit his cremains to be buried, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, confident of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. For we who remain, this marks the end of a lifetime of love and laughter, accomplishments both great and small, dreams and memories that live on in the lives of his family and loved ones. But for Bonhomme, we trust that this has also been the beginning of a new and even better life in the presence of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we offer you our thanks and praise for all you have done for us through Jesus Christ. By giving Jesus to live and to die for us, you've made known your plan to redeem the world and shown us that your love is limitless and unending. By raising Christ from the dead, you have promised that those who trust in him will share his resurrection life. For the assurance and the hope of our faith, we give you our thanks and praise. We're grateful for the life of Bonhomme, now gone from among us, for all your goodness to him through many seasons, for all that he was to those who loved him, and for everything in his life that reflected your goodness. We bless you that all his sorrow and suffering are past, and that he is safe in your presence. Help us to release him to you, gracious God. Assure us that in your keeping he is safe. Surround all who mourn today with your love that knows no end, and fill us with your peace and joy that passes all understanding. Loving God, we are grateful for your presence among us. We ask now for the blessing of your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to go with us and to give us your peace. Be especially near to Onmali and the family as they adjust to this life without Bonhomme among us and bless all those family and friends who have walked with them through this difficult journey. Grant them your comfort and your peace. May our lives be an expression of the hope that we have in Jesus, even as we mourn the death of this one who has passed on ahead of us into his eternal reward. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to make us stand without fault in the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. Amen. Donna, would you lead us in another song? Run me in singing one verse of To God Through the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Thank you all for coming and sharing in this time together here this morning. As we close the service here, then I assume if anybody would like to help put the dirt back into the grave, you're welcome to do that. And if not, they'll take care of it later. Uh, but if you want to do that, that'll be fine. And we will have time for some more sharing and stories and those things as long as you want to stay. So receive this prayer of blessing and benediction. May the God of peace and our Lord Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, complete his good work in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that each one of us may live in such a way as to bring glory to God and comfort and encouragement to each other until that day when we too shall be joined together in the presence of God and in the company of all those who have gone on before us. May God bless you and keep you. May the very face of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
Bye.